says Ed's connecting oh. the audio. Let's see that. Connected. Oh, hey. Cool. Hold on. Let me see how the video works. All right. Yeah, there he is. Starts. <laughs> what up, bro? Hey, man. Hey. What's up? Right. So, <laughs> what up? <laughs> All right, we're going over um, the like what you guys were doing like um, during the lockdown. So you would tell me at first was your tour that was supposed to happen. Uh, we're supposed to play in Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, but that shit fell through. So we decided to just keep busy. We just focused on releasing our new seven inch holes inside my brain and also the etardation compilation that i worked on You're just to keep it fresh you know just to keep people on their toes <laughs> and that's all people in california the compilation is yeah 33 bands all california punk rock bands it's a mixture of punk there's like crust there's thrash there's hardcore punk there's street punk there's oi little flavor for everybody you know that's awesome and are you that connected with that many different bands that, or do you just go and search? There was a couple bands that I had no idea who they were. They kind of just submitted a couple songs, but about 90% of them, I cherry picked them out myself, you know? Yeah. That's awesome, dude. That's yeah. really cool. It's also just like a way to network to like, oh, you put me on a compilation. I'll get you some shows when you come into our town, you know? Yeah, kind of like a good trade off. <laughs> Yeah, all right. that's awesome. And then, so what? Um, and that just released in June. Uh, the compilation? No, that was February of this okay. year. Okay, February. Yeah. And then, um, have you guys done? What have, have you guys released anything else since then? Uh, no, we we're actually just working on a song, but it's hard to get all of us in the practice space. We all got like crazy work schedules and shit. But it's going to happen. We do have like plans to do an LP. We got plans to tour Japan next September. Um, what's that? What did you want? Yeah. <laughs> I'm we like really 21% Japanese. Did you know that? I can see it. <laughs> yeah. I got my DNA. I did the spit in the cup thing. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, 21%. I got to see what my shit says. Yeah. It's like you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys get together? I've known Ed for two thousand two, so a long time. So a long time. He's actually, you know, he's been best friends in my my life for many years before me and my wife even met. Um, I just seen him around. He would go to shows, and then like, uh, how we got the band started. Um, it was me on vocals and guitar. My buddy Al J on bass and my buddy Fed on drums. We're kind of playing like musical chairs and seeing where we fit in the band. But uh, I decided to stay on guitar, but I, I can't sing and play for like the life of me. So uh, we're like trying to figure out like uh, out of our friends who's like funny and just kind of like out there. And Ed was the first one to pop pop in the hat. So but, uh, first practice, he came and started writing lyrics right away. So we're like, all right, he's a keeper, you know. <laughs> and the lyrics are damn funny too. <laughs> and then, well, how did how did you guys meet then? I want to know that story. Now, I, now we'll go on with the band in a little bit. You want to tell the yeah. story, Ed? Tell the story. <laughs> I went to go watch Manis at the Netting Factory. Yeah, Netting Factory. And I said, first time I met this guy, he had a fucking his seven inch for last priority. And I'm like, well, you ain't got no CDs. You know, I don't really know at the time. And I was like, you know, a little new, but maybe I should have grabbed that. <laughs> but I didn't. And, you know, just uh, ever since then, dude, just run them into shows. And especially when I went to the Oxnard shows and the shows. But, yeah, he's been a good guy ever since I met him, dude. <coughs> it's awesome. Aww. Awesome to see the same here, too. Because you can really tell, you know, from the outside looking in that you guys are, I mean, it looks that way. You guys are super close. Oh, we're tight. Yeah, we do a lot, a lot of shit together. Travel together, go all over the damn place. You know, and just like your body language when you're around each other as well, like it's, it's telling. You know, 
Yeah, it could be one or the other, but it's all all in good love, you know. <laughs> <laughs> married. <laughs> yeah, being in a band's like being married to four four women you don't want to be married to. <laughs> <laughs> it's just married. like marriage. <laughs> um. So you guys, so you guys get together and then like you guys just start playing shows right away, or did it take a while? Yeah, like uh, we we played one live stream show in January during the whole pandemic. And like, besides that, I don't really count that as a show. You know, it wasn't like people there like slamming yeah. around and yelling at you and shit like that. I was that. talking but, about uh, at the beginning of you guys like getting together. Oh. And do you guys just yeah. play immediately or is it a build up? It's definitely a build up. I mean, you have to have like a decent set list. I think our first show we played eight songs. Or something like that, maybe even less than that. <laughs> but yeah, we, we we wanted to play right away. We want to get a little tight and then go out there and start playing. And you're such a Ed, you're such a a showman too. And I like it. <laughs> um, how did you, as as a performer, how did you get to where you're at now? Like the has it always been this way? As they come in little pieces. Yeah, the other uh, singers or you know, front people come up to me and I'm like, no fear, dude. That's all you got to do. Just think of an idea, do it. Don't hesitate, just do it. And uh, if it looks like you know what you're doing up there, you know, <laughs> people believe it. So <laughs> <laughs> That's actually one of my theories. Like, I, I really suck at playing guitar. I just make it look really cool. Yeah, swinging right. around and shit, you know. Like, Put I on that punk rock face when you play. <laughs> I forget half the lyrics, but once my shirt comes off and people are like, "Oh wait," <laughs> and like I must be like I am super insecure, man. Like for you to go out there, it, like you have you hide nothing from anyone, you know. <clears throat> Does that is that the exhilarating part of it? Like exhilarating part of it. Well, I just always loved it, man. Like, you know, the whole Queen Lady Gaga, just the whole showmanship, the whole just, it's like a play to me. Yeah. You know, like, I, that's my stage right there. <laughs> and that's where I get to show what I want to show. He definitely steals the show. Like, after our set, like, I'll be, you know, wrapping it up and people like flock to him to want to take photos, you know, like, what about me, man? I'm in the band too. Like, <laughs> 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 it's all good though it's all good i mean like i just get the joy of just playing you know yeah so you guys um you guys you guys were you know doing your thing um and you guys continue to do your thing like ex- you know into the the quarantine um, when they first when they first come to you with the idea for a stream show or or do you come up with the idea? How does that that one come? Uh, it was actually brought up from our buddies from Justified Anger. They just um, they wanted an extra guest and they chose us. We said hell yeah, we'll do it because we're like itching to just play and be in the same room with each other. All we had to do was show up. Yeah, that's, that's all we got to do. <laughs> I didn't I didn't have to take like any energy besides just like driving there, you know yeah and that's that was pretty cool and then cool. do you guys what do you have going on now what's what's going on within the next six months that you can share um we have a couple shows coming up i believe yes the sardine yeah oh yeah we're playing with the that's right <laughs> brain fart um yeah we're playing the sardine which is a really cool like venue it's the guys from recess ops they're an fyp uh, toys that kill the actually own that bar it's like a record store venue bar they have craft beer there's like it's really bitching you have to go and check it out but um we're playing with dr no and hiding inside victims um out of ventura they'll be joining us only three bands but it's gonna be great we have a long beach oh yeah well, that that one fell through i think <laughs> uh... <laughs> you guys travel like you guys travel pretty good huh you guys yeah, draw, you draw a crowd no matter where you go uh i wouldn't say that like but i definitely <laughs> definitely uh interest some people you know 
I still love when the 805. That's all I'm going to say. Every time you go there, it's always a killer crowd. Oh, yeah, for sure. Really cool or not, they're just there for the music, and that's awesome. Yeah, I definitely went, a lot of love out there, for sure. It's a good show. It's a good crowd, but someone tells you that out there for me, you know? <laughs> Um, we always get a lot. Of, we always get a lot of love in San Jose too, for some weird reason. Like um, our first that. tour, our first tour we played, I think it was the place was it called the Ritz over in downtown. Yep. Like nobody ever heard of us. Like the next band after us was like some black metal band, yeah. and we all come in with our gear. They're kind of looking at us like, who are these fucking like douchebags, you know? <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> we went on stage and blew everyone away. I think we sold the most merch that night. Uh, it was tons of fun. Got a bunch of free booze. It was great. And then the second time we went there, we played the Cash Bar, which is downtown as well. And a lot of people came and checked us out. Um, one of those places, like, we're always guaranteed, like, a really good hefty payout, you know? So we always, like, stop by and playing over there. People are great over there anyway. But I think um, we played in front of nobody in Charleston, Washington, or uh, at the Charleston at Bremerton, Washington. It was a big, beautiful venue. Like, no one showed up. <laughs> <laughs> And there was like three people. But there was yeah, it was like a, like literally three people, and like they're like two of them were the bartenders, you know. <laughs> what, what has been your favorite <laughs> moment about being in this band? Oh man, each each show is like a different like crack up or like some sort of adventure, you know. I like I like mostly like like going on the road and on going on tour, you know, because it's us and the boys, and like every town's different. There's always something funny to laugh at, you know. <laughs> give me a story uh well one time we played i think it was called like the stardust or something in whittier it's kind of a funny story um <laughs> so like uh we played we're playing the show then ed does this thing like mid-set you know starts taking off his clothes but he had like a, a, a wardrobe malfunction like he like had these shorts that would kind of tear off he had like his buttons kind of <laughs> yeah like everything came off, like his dick was all hanging out and everything. You know? <laughs> and then like <laughs> I remember like looking over to my right and like the owner of the bar was like freaking out, like holding his head, like, make it stop, you guys gonna stop playing now. <laughs> like, we just kept playing and just we're just laughing and like he was pulling all the plugs out of like the wall and like turn off the lights and shit, but anything but our instruments. <laughs> <laughs> he just like goes to his knees, just like stop it now. And it was funny because like after the show, he's like, "You guys are banned. You're no longer allowed to play here." Like big fucking deal. This bar sucks anyway. <laughs> my art, my art. I mean, yeah, yeah. Ed was like, "Oh, like that's you know that's our art. That's what we do." <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've probably seen Ed's dick quite a few times, huh? To be honest, no, I haven't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, would, I would imagine with his outfits, man. You've probably, seen mine, you've probably just, seen mine a few times. <laughs> more than uh, yeah, just one wardrobe. wardrobe malfunction. Yeah, well, I mean, I wasn't really trying to look at that, but I was like, I knew exactly <laughs> what happened, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about you, Ed? Story from the road. Yeah. Uh. Well, I like the time we played in San Diego. First time we played, it was this guy, Dave Thrash's birthday. Uh, and I don't know how, I think you knew Josh or something. I don't know you heard of us really, but we went and played his birthday. Turns out he's like an old punk rocker, four years old, who's a lawyer, owns his own law firm. All he has to do is like drive his fucking Lamborghini to his office, pick up checks and work yeah, out. Yeah, loaded, loaded with money. Shit. <laughs> yeah, dude, and his fucking house is amazing. He had a jacuzzi right on the porch. You could look, you sit on a jacuzzi, you could see Tijuana. It's awesome. Yeah. Like eight bedrooms. We all had a bedroom to sleep in. They're like yeah. super nice. It's awesome. <laughs> Good homie, too. All we did was like, this is what the millionaires do. They stay up, watch YouTube, and do whip it. That shit was fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, he, I remember he took us all to like a, to a strip club and paid for all of us to get in. <laughs> I was on our birthday, remember? Me and Carrie's. Yeah, that was pretty rad. <laughs> And then he met, he, he met his now wife or girlfriend, whatever. Oh, yeah. She, like, made him, like, like delete us on, like, friends on Facebook and shit. <laughs> <laughs> We're too just, crazy for him. <laughs> <laughs> That's just funny, man. <laughs> um, did you, like, when you were first starting out, like, were, 
like because this is awesome like what you guys have like to me the creativity that you have brought and your music itself your art is it's amazing and i'm like so so honored you know that you guys fuck around with you know i mean you guys are part of us and so i don't know i just i've always wanted to, to let you guys know that it, i fucking appreciate you guys and thank you for everything thank you that's that means a lot to us <laughs> at least we touch somebody not <laughs> physically sexually not yet <laughs> Yeah, um, I I, I, gonna, my last question just because the way I'm going to write it is sure. what inspires you and where when is the last time you were inspired and that inspiration translates to your art man I can name a lot of things like I'm constantly buying records I have like a vinyl fucking fascination and obsession so I'm discovering new bands all the time and I gather those kind of like their riffs and their ideas and kind of just mold it into my brain and try to spit it out on a guitar, you know? So th there's always there's always new influences coming at me like every second of the day. You know, if I go see a band play live, I'm like, wow, this guy, this band can really move on stage, you know? And I want to be like those guys and like wow people. Because when, when I watch a band, like, I, I, you know, I'm all for the energy. Like if, if they can like just blast me with like a head full of energy, make me want to move, get out of my chair and dance around. That's what I want to do, and that's the biggest inspiration for me is this, uh, the performance and like the music and everything about it that goes behind it. Go. Cool. Well, uh, for me, <laughs> it's like life itself, man. You know, just uh, you write what you know. But our songs, you know, Static Landsman, uh, what was it 2016? I don't know how many years ago. <laughs> Taking the rally up in Anaheim and. Uh, some of my friends went up there to, you know, counter protest and happened that my friend got stabbed. So I wrote the song Stab a Clans for because of that. You know, our song uh The Beast, for example, it's about our good friend Beth. Used to be very sexually aggressive. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's he's nice. an inspiration too, for sure. Yeah, you know, it's fine to write a song. You know, it's what it is. <laughs> what I know, who I know, it's you know what I live. Yeah, so there is some, like, real shit behind our music, and there's also a lot of funny shit, too, at the same time. We try to stay out of politics, because that just drives people crazy, and just, I don't know, I hate debating with people about it. <laughs> so we just, like, writing about, like, partying and having a good time and chilling with our friends, because that's what we fucking do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Make fun of each other. <laughs> <laughs> what? Man, and you we're guys... damn good at it. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, and if you guys do you have anything else that, that's coming out that you would want to promote because this probably is going to go in October because my September is already out or about to we, come out. we oh, are discussing doing a split seven inch with this band called the Destructors out of Canada um, okay. that's still up in the air um, but I'm, I'm really really hoping to work because uh, I think we can bang out a song and make a killer split with a really killer band you know and then Japan tour, and we have another interactive by that for sure, too. Yeah, definitely next year we'll have a, an LP out, most definitely. We just got to get yeah, our asses in the studio and get to work. All right. Like a band should do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you. And, Thank you, Stan. Uh, appreciate it. We'll see you. Good luck. All right. Cheers, man. Yeah.